Hey everyone, I'm Live's Brennan Quinn here, uh, alongside Michigan football beat writer Nick Baumgartner. It is game week. All right. Michigan, Utah, it's finally, it's finally here. Yeah. The submarine is sunk. <laughs> it's actually it's time to dry dock. It's, it's actually time to play some football. Um, so what we wanted to do today uh, is spend a little time to go through the depth chart, the idea of the depth chart. Now, Michigan may or may not release an actual... This is run on Wednesday. We're filming on Monday morning, right. so we don't have it yet. If we get it at all, which we'll see. And even if they do, yeah. if they do actually release it too deep, the, the, the exercise today is not to predict what that too deep would look like, but more or less what it will look like over time. in the game yeah. Yeah. and over time. Uh, because whatever actually gets released by Michigan, there's no we'll guarantee see. that that's actually what you'll see on the field. John Baxter said as much on Saturday when he met with the media, and he said, if we give you anything, that's just yeah. kind of a, an outline for, right. for what it could look like. So we wanted to go through things today, get Nick's take on what this thing will actually look like um, when it kind of comes down to, to actually snap the ball. So yeah. we're going to start on the defensive side of the ball, obviously here. We're expecting <laughs> a standard 4-2-5 defense with a buck. It will look like a 4-3, almost sort of four men up front, but that's actually going to be a buck right there. Cornerback, cornerback, safety, safety, and a... Nickel. Nick, let's start up front on the D line. You look at those three spots. These are going to be hand in the dirt. Right. And then first, before we'll about, I think that for the most part, what we'll see, I would assume, is this will this will mainly be what they what they plan. They talked a lot about getting three safeties on the field. That's a nickel. I mean, that could be here, here, wherever. Right. So I think that I think for the most part, you'll see this. You could see a third linebacker in there on top of whatever. I mean, it could be different uh, depending on the personnel. But I think for the most part, throughout games of season, they'll play something like that. So. Uh, if we start up front, I guess uh, we can start in the middle. There's no Brian Monet anymore. Right. Uh, depending on what's, uh, what formation, we'll say that's a nose. We'll say uh, uh, Glasgow, Ryan Glasgow. That's a safe bet. Pardon my horrible uh, penmanship. This is pretty be the bad. Fun part, actually. Uh, <laughs> so I think that's a safe bet there. Uh, you know, and again, these these front three especially can rotate pretty regularly as, in terms of tackle end. Uh, over here, you can see on the strong side end, you can see uh, Wormley. Uh, Taco, they can both play there inside. Willie Henry could play there as well, but maybe defensive tackle. Uh, Matt Godin. So Henry Godin, Wormley, Taco, Glasgow. I think Henry can play here. Godin can play here. Uh, Hurst. Uh, I should have put him under Glasgow. Whatever. We're already screwing this up. <laughs> Hurst there. So I think I think for the most part you, you can see sort of. All of these guys are sort of interchangeable. Glasgow's probably going to stay at, uh, at a nose, but for the most part, a lot of these guys can play different positions, sure. and that's an advantage for them in that they can really start switching guys around. So I think you'll see what you see at a starting game in the defensive line doesn't mean anything. It'll be something that continues to, to switch. I think in your, your that, that buck spot, for the most part, it'll be Ojemudia. If I can spell everybody's name right. Ojemudia, uh, Lawrence Marshall. We'll get time here. Uh, Royce Jenkins Stone. We'll get time here. So, you know, again, it's, it's a big rotation of guys and a heavy uh, shift. And it'll be, again, who's going to be the guy that stands out? Who's going to earn that time? They're going to find out when they actually play. Explain the buck spot. Well, so the buck spot. People don't understand it because it looks, yeah. it looks like a normal four-man front. But why is that different? Yeah, he's standing for yeah. the most part. Sometimes he's not. Sometimes his, his, his hand's on the ground. But it's basically it's a, it's a rush linebacker. It's your old weak side end. So in last year's defense, think of where Frank Clark played. Mm -hmm. That would have been his spot. He'd been standing up. Your, your strong side end is your bigger is your bigger end who, who's there to sort, sort of, uh, that's a pass rushing spot, sure, basically, is what sure. that is. So it's just a different just a different deal, uh, and that's just their formation of what they'll use. And that way you can be a little versatile out of that. So not too terribly different, but it is uh, a little bit different. Now, linebacking is, sta is kind of painted as the strength yeah. of, the, of the defense, maybe of the entire team, these two spots here. Right. Yeah, well, that's easy. That's, that's, much set. that's Bolden, Morgan. And there you go, and that's and that that's those are the guys. And get Ben Gideon will play here some. James Ross could play here some. Uh, James Ross will play some when the nickel comes out, right? You know, and, and he comes in as a third linebacker, or whatever it is. But I, I would think for the most part, those are three in the middle with those two getting. I would say those are the heart. That's the heartbeat of your defense right there. Yep. So I would think those guys are on the field as much as humanly possible uh, at all times. So that's pretty simple. And then again, Ross maybe as a mm -hmm. as an extra guy if you take the nickel off the field. And then we go to the secondary, I think it's a little more interesting. Right, the corner spot, obviously yeah. losing, uh, losing Blake Countess out for uh, Lewis. via the transfer. Right. So how do you think this actually is going to play out when it's all said and done? Lewis, real easy. That's the best cover corner you have. Sure. Uh, and he, whoever, if this is if this is their number one, 
that's where Lewis is. If he's over there, that's where Lewis is. That's your best cover corner. And if you're going to play anything uh, resembling press, he will be the guy there. Now, your other corner is where things get interesting because, as we said, Blake Countess isn't here anymore. Uh, can we even read this? Is it good? Yeah, I guess you can kind of read it. I'm going to go as we go. <laughs> so Blake Countess is gone. <laughs> Uh, so we got Wayne Lyons came in, but, but Wayne Lyons played a lot of, repped a lot of safety at the student uh, scrimmage, which made, yeah. which kind of sort of leads you to believe that maybe he's more of a safety, or maybe he's not getting it done at corner, or maybe it's a smoke screen. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Jeremy Clark did rep at corner, which is weird a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he's 6'4", 205 pounds, and he's playing corner. So if Jeremy Clark is a 6'4 corner who can really play at corner, um, that means that everybody in the country missed out on a giant cornerback who's huge and can run fast, and no one knew that he could play corner because he's been a safety uh, during his time at Michigan. So maybe that's a great find, or maybe sure. that's a we're in trouble, and he's a, one of the best athletes we have, so we need him to play here. I think he's obviously going to see time there. Lions will see time there. Mm -hmm. Stribling will see time there. So I think for most of you got four corners that you're going to work through. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the one, Lewis is the one solid one, and, and everything else after that. I think again, this is this speaks to just this whatever that two right. deep says. Whatever right. I think, all these guys are going to see time for the most sure. part, barring like that those guys aren't leaving the field. Glasgow is probably going to play a lot. Willie Henry will play a lot. Lewis won't leave the field, but some right. of these other spots, it's just going to be a rotation. Say team goes three or four wide. Good slot wide receiver. They put three cornerbacks on the field. Who's going to be the top corner covering a slot guy? Well, I, I would think at that time, at that point, if it's it's three on the field, you could see something where, or if they spread you out, Lewis, and here's Peppers, right? And that's where I mean, long story, we work our way to him. I mean, he will be lined up wherever. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. the, that's the nickel or a safety in a, in a standard. 43 set, I think he just rotates all over the place. I think he's on, if you need to put him on a really uh, top end outside receiver, he goes there. If you want him to play more close to the line in the box, he, he comes up there and almost acts as another linebacker. Uh, he can be a captain in the middle. I mean, I think for the most part, he is sort of a, uh, I think we've we've heard the term like bandit before, mm -hmm. Space, like a guy just in space who can move around and just be wherever you need him. And I think that for the most part is... It's an interest. It's a different concept. It's one that's uh, pretty challenging for some guys. But I think if you have a smart enough player, he can do it. So I think he's on the field at all times. Yes. Uh, even if you're in a forty-three, because I think uh, you have your safeties would be Wilson. This is just I can't even write. Uh, and Delano Hill, uh, Clark Lyons could maybe maybe back up there. But I, you know I, those two guys are pretty solid football players. If you go and take the nickel out, he goes here. Hill goes to the bench. James Ross comes in. Sure. And there you go. So I think for the most part, and this will shuffle a lot, and that's what's interesting is a lot of these spots, and it'll be more so maybe on offense, but a lot of these spots on defense especially is you're just going to see a constant rotation. They, the things they have to find, they have to find somebody who can cover somebody opposite of Jordan Lewis. Yep. Um, and for the most part, you know, I, I think that's kind of it. I think you got to find maybe a solid who's going to be the guy there. Um, you need a playmaker there. Yeah, you need yeah. a playmaker there. But you know, you know what you got at the other three line, the defensive line spots. You know what you got at the linebacker. Right. You know these two guys can get it done. You know he's good. He's supposed to be great. Yeah. Find another corner. I think you got a really good defense. Yeah, I think I think Peppers really needs to be the real deal. Bolton obviously needs to make a ton of tackles. Morgan needs to make plays. Everyone says the defense is the strength of the team. Then it's you also kind of forget you you very you hear. Pretty rarely about they lose Jake Ryan and they right. lose Frank Clark. They yep. two NFL caliber guys are off this defense. Now watch this action. <laughs> oh, should we slide it down? Don't break it. Don't take it off. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. See, now ESPN, ESPN <laughs> like has their, their touch screens. <laughs> they got interactive. They got giant eye yeah, no, pads right. on the wall. We go. We go old school. We're not that rich. At, uh, at good old M Live. So now the offensive side of the ball. We're just gonna look at a standard set here, whereas under Jim Harbaugh, you can expect you know double tight end sets, you can expect probably multiple guys in the backfield every once in a yeah. while, uh, using the fullback, things like that, but... We're not going to break down formations. We're standard gonna show you standard offense right here, probably gonna play. how Nick thinks this will actually play out in terms of not what depth chart they say, but what will actually be seen. So your offensive line, that's going to be pretty much set as Nick gets into it. You got your two wide outs, a tight end, a quarterback, a tailback, and we're going to go. We're going to put in a third wide receiver for the purpose of actually talking about how this thing could break down. Right. Um, we'll build up to the quarterback. Okay. That's obviously we'll the right. conversation that we need. Let's start up front. That's set. Right. So we're going. We're working the right side is here, right? Yeah. So, so I'm looking at it. Okay. So 
Uh, center, uh, that's easy, that's Graham Glasgow, uh, who I think, honestly, might be the most important player yeah. on offense, mm -hmm. possibly, with along with maybe Mason Cole, because he can play here, 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 here. I mean, he can play anywhere. So if anybody gets hurt, sure. that's he's always going to be one of your best five. Uh, I think he's very important. So we go uh, to the left side here, right, left, yeah, that's easy. Cole, who started there all year. Uh, and another, it's the same thing. He's, he's versatile enough to play basically anywhere you need if, if somebody gets hurt uh, or what have you. The other, the other sure thing, no doubt about it, is Kalis, a right guard. He has had what they've said is basically the best camp he's ever had. It's mm -hmm. finally turned on for him. And I think you can kind of tell talking to Kyle that he seems really confident. He Pretty mature. Really comfortable. Yeah. So, so I think that's a sure bet there. Uh, and I think for the most part how this is going to work down, and, and this is the one, I mean, we'll put Magnus in. Magnuson is a tackle, uh, and he's consistent out there when he's healthy. They try to they try to make guard, and he's done okay. But I think he was recruited to play tackle, and that's where he should be. And I think that's mm -hmm. where he'll end up. Uh, and here, the, the the left guard spot, I guess, is the one that maybe could change. But uh, we'll go ahead and say it's Ben Braden, uh, and then you could say David Dawson, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, and again, maybe. Uh, like, maybe Blake Bars, maybe, but. I think that's the one spot that was not totally sealed throughout camp. I think that's the one spot that they sort of worked on because Braden is an interesting player and in that he played right tackle last season and he was he was okay. He played every game right. and he wasn't uh, that consistent. They tried him at guard a few years ago and that was apparently a disaster, mm -hmm. uh, but they're going to give it a shot again. So I guess I think you got four safe bets there and we'll see. Right. You put him between these two guys though and I think that helps out a lot. You put right. him between Glasgow and Cole who are your best two linemen I think. You know, maybe it's maybe that's not bad. Obviously, good up front. Biggest key will be well. They got to prove it. Stay healthy. Staying stay healthy, healthy and proving the, it. They're experienced up front. They are. Are they good? We'll see. That's right. the biggest question. Are they? They're experienced. The guys have all played a ton. They've all seen everything. All of these guys have been against. You know, they've seen the top teams. I mean, he's been doing it. This will be his third year. He started every game. This will be his basically his third year, and this will be more or less his too. So I mean, you're you've seen all these crazy environments. You've seen all this crazy stuff. You've been beaten up. Are you finally going to pull it off mm -hmm. and do it? Mm -hmm. Your experience, but experience doesn't necessarily mean you're good. Sure. We're going to have to find that out. Sure. Tight end is set. Jake Butt. Everyone knows that best, maybe the best in tight the end in, in the Big Ten. Maybe the Probably. best offensive player. Run through when when you do see two tight end sets. When you see Butt come out. Wow. Yeah, you maybe see that breaking down. Like, I, there's a lot of bodies there, yeah, but they're pretty improving. And I think you'll see you'll see some multiple tight sets. And I, and, you know, it's interesting that uh, Tyrone Wheatley Jr. is hurt mm -hmm. because he's like 300 pounds. We saw that. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's like 290 dude. pounds. Big so no, I think if he were healthy, maybe he'd factor in as a separate uh, as a second blocking tight end. But I think for the most part, you've got uh, Ian Bunting, who has gained enough weight now. Bunting came in here at like 200. And he's like six seven. He came in here at like oh, in the 230s. He's sure. now. Well over 250, I think that's good enough. You know, as Jake Butts, 6'6", 252, that's a prototypical size for a do-it-all tight end bunting, 6'7", 254-ish, something like that. So I think he's in a physical position where if the light goes on, he can play. Uh, a guy that people forget about uh, who's healthy again is Khalid Hill, yep. who was, uh, I think, turning into something that was going to be pretty productive when he got hurt last year. Uh, really physical, can block, he's got better hands than I think people and he thought he had. And he, he can, can move, move for his size, he's a big dude. So he'll play, bunting will play. Uh, AJ Williams is still on the team, although I think AJ Williams has probably fallen down the list because uh, we just haven't heard much about him. He's a senior and he, he's played a lot, but he, he's played a lot almost out of necessity because up until now you don't really have, you know, I guess you found Jake Budd and that's your guy. But right. So there's another one. I mean, Winovich could play some. It's just a ton of guys. Winovich, uh, Henry Pogey is now here. And again, some of these guys could be. Especially those two, and maybe even Hill could be if you didn't use an H back sure. in a set in a situation. I think those guys could play in those spots. Mm -hmm. Those are just basically big fullback type guys who are playing tight end. But this is the uh, star. I mean, that's the guy yeah. who the honestly that's that's the guy who the offense might be based around. In that, I think he could be a guy who leads the team in catches. I mean, well, I really certainly have the most targets. If you settle, if you sure. settle a quarterback and finally get yourself in a groove, I think that uh, he could uh, really feast in this in this set because he is. I mean, he is what you want. Physically, I don't think there's anybody right. better in the Big Ten right. uh, at that spot. So that's but now, and that brings us to the wide receivers. Because if the wide receivers aren't getting any separation, aren't making plays, right. well, now defenses are going to be able to shut down right. Jake Butt a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so why not? Obviously, it's a group that loses over the last two years between Gallon and Funches. It's a lot of catches. It's a lot of talent. And now it's just kind of 
a blank slate. No, really it's in, one guy we'll see. Opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, I mean, it's, we know who that Darbo right. is a solid football player. If he's healthy, I guess he missed that scrimmage, so we'll see if how healthy he is, but Harbaugh didn't say that he wasn't going to play. So that's your one sure thing. Right. You know what he is. He's uh, a good wide receiver. I don't know if he's a. I don't know if he's game breaker, but he's, right. he's a guy who's not going to screw up or miss assignments mm -hmm. or blow routes or just be a mess. So I think we can safely say he's going to be on the field quite a bit. The other, the other outside receiver, and I, I mean, this is just me basing off of how Jim Harbaugh's talked about the guy. Is I think you're finally going to see uh, Drake Harris play football in a real game uh, <laughs> for a team because I mean. And, and, and I'll read about this, a couple, I'll say this a couple different ways, or I guess the easiest way to say it is this. When Jim Harbaugh talks about players, uh, this isn't like, he doesn't speak about them like uh, maybe Brady Hoke used to in that, that guy's doing a great job, that guy's doing a great job, right. every single guy on the team's doing a great job. He, we've asked him about certain guys, and he's kind of said, yeah, he's still on the team. Like, yeah, he's, he's working. Acknowledges their he existence. acknowledges their existence and moves along. We ask him about Drabil Peppers, and he spouts on for four or five minutes mm -hmm. almost sometimes, it feels like, about what a great talent he is and how impressed he's been with him and this, that, and the other. Jake Butt. Jake, Jake Butt, Butt, same thing. Said he was one of the most talented tight ends he's ever seen. Uh, I think they've done the same thing with Kalis and Glasgow and Cole to a degree. Said those guys have had great camps. And last Thursday, he said that about Drake Harris. He went on and said that the guy is healthy. Uh, he's been a difference maker since they started camp. He said that from spring until now, he's made them better. Yeah. Um, I, we go back and remember who he was when he was in high school. He was one of the highest recruited talents, and he was a junior, and he was one of the highest yeah. recruited receivers in the country. His high school junior season was unbelievable. I, I mean, if he's healthy, then, uh, you know, given your depth of wide receiver, he might be your best option to break a game open or make plays. Sure. So, you know, he's going to play. Will he start? I, I don't know. Uh, I, that, again, that's probably something that even if they send a depth chart out on Monday, the rest of the week, you know, these competitions will continue. He'll play. I mean, yeah. we can we can safely bet that. So will Jess, uh, Chesson. Uh, I mean, he'll obviously see time as well. But you know, they're going to give him a shot because right. if he's healthy, again, he he is a he is a natural wide receiver. Whereas Chesson is sort of a track guy mm -hmm. who had to learn how to play. And Darbo's more. If you have a game breaker, he's a possession guy. And he was what yeah. opposite of Funchess yeah. uh, last year, and that was a good role for him. So I think that that's if they have a chance. He's it. I mean, I, I think if he's healthy, then which is kind of rolling the dice here because this is a guy who has had just multiple problems. But we'll have to see. I mean, and then I guess your insight would be uh, we've heard a lot about Grant Perry, true freshman who caught more than 100 passes as a senior in high school last year. Jed Fish said it a bunch of times. If you can catch 100 passes, we'll find a place for him the yeah. field because that means you're you're hanging on to the football. You're not screwing up. Uh, you're doing your job. And then I think that uh, Freddie Canteen could, we'll we'll see time here. Although he's playing both, both ways. Both ways. Right. I mean, you can see we forgot to put him on the defensive side, but I mean, yeah, he could, he could, he could factor in at that other corner spot as they're just desperate to find another corner opposite. That, that sort of tells you that Clearly. they miss Blake Countess, yeah. despite what some people might have yeah. thought. Uh, but he'll rep on both sides. How much he plays on either, I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, maybe Brian Cole, you know, depending on how fast he catches up with everything. But we, we heard more about Perry right. than we did Brian Cole right. in terms of He's just knows what he's doing. Right. He's a football player. And this I is mean, such a clear picture of what yeah. they're kind of looking at at the wide receiver spot. When you, you got Harris, you got Cole, you got Hurts. Yeah. You know, three of the five right. guys have, have not caught. And then we got other guys, you know, like Demario Jones, <laughs> who we've seen like nothing of since right. he's been here. Right. Dukes, Duran Dukes is in the same boat. I mean, these guys are guys that it's sort of getting like, yeah, it's getting time here. You either yeah. got to do it or leave, <laughs> basically. And that's sort of what where they're at. So where they factor in. Maybe they had a great camp, but we just never heard about it, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yep. We're going to move to probably the two biggest conversations yep. of the entire preseason. What we're going to we wrap up. We do a fullback over here. We're, we're going to wrap up on sure. that. Sure. Fullback. Sure. You'll have Joe Carrick, obviously, carriage. a team captain. And uh, Huma. So yep. that's easy enough. Uh, that Brady Pallant is back on the defensive side. He'll rotate in at nose. So he's out of there. So those are your two fullbacks. Uh, and then running back. I mean, that's the... Yeah, I guess somebody's got to take the first snap, but I don't know if that means right. anything. Uh, I don't think Drake Harris is going to play. It didn't sound like it. Or Drake uh, Johnson. No. It didn't sound, sound like he's going to be healthy enough. Which, and I'll just say this before we even start, I think if Drake Johnson is healthy, I think he's the best back they have. I think if he's healthy, I think he's the guy that ultimately maybe wins a job. For the same reasons I've said earlier, when we hear Jim Arbaugh and Tyrone Wheatley talk about yeah. Drake Johnson, yes. it's different yeah. than when we hear them talk about any of those other guys. He lights up. They, he lights up. He's a different back with a different something, and I think they really like that. So... So for this purpose, I don't think Drake's going to play in this game. If he does, I don't think it's going to be much because just, he just got cleared, I think, last week. So uh, maybe he's out. But I think, you know, otherwise it's just, you know, it's, who knows? I mean, it's Smith, 
Isaac, and Green. And from all I can, I mean, there's one guy in that mix who's constantly in shape and constantly healthy, and it's Smith. Maybe not Smith. And, uh, you know, he, from the day spring started until now, hasn't missed any time. He's been in shape. Uh, he was hurt. He gained weight again. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, I mean, if everything's even, the guy who's been there and gone through the most reps probably gets it, I would think. But I think at the end of the day, all three of them are certainly going to see carries, and all three of them will have a chance to maybe make their mark on a game. Because you never know. It's I mean, be, it's, it's going to be whoever, so, yeah. whoever's breaking tackles. Whoever this is the guy we, we got to see okay. because we know what those guys right. can do. We got to see if he can do it. I, I just, we just haven't heard enough, yeah. uh, enough from the staff about drooling over. I, no I haven't heard any of it. I, I mean, mean, it's, it's amazing the fact that yeah. on a, on a third and two, if they're in a third and two in the first quarter, I have no idea who would be the best option there. Right. Isaac's just, the biggest guy. Might be a field thing. Well, he, he, well, not anymore. I mean, he did lose weight, so he's in shape now. He's still six two twenty eight, six three two twenty eight. So he was, he was two forty plus. Right. So he got his weight down, got his hamstring under control, all that. Um, but again, I mean, it's going to be probably a field thing, I would think. That's something that maybe Tyrone Wheatley factors in heavily with, of who... Tyrone Wheatley might want to go out there. <laughs> well, he would be the guy. He would play, <laughs> play still, but that'll be a rotation. I mean, I think, I think they'll probably have some sort of a plan where all of them get a set percentage of carries right. and they'll just figure it out. Right. And the million-dollar question. Oh, yeah. So, here, yeah. <laughs> so whatever it says on there, I think uh, to start off, I think Jake Rudock's going to be the guy. Uh, and then Morris Beer, number two. Uh, so I think that, you know, for the most part, I think in this game, and we just, you know, we can go off of what the reports were from Saturday's scrimmage and that Rudock was uh, consistent. He ran with the ones, and Shane was still Shane. Mm -hmm. In that, uh, he was missing guys. Uh, he still has a giant arm, but he still has trouble you know, reeling it in. Right. And the safe bet is Rudock. And in a game like this against Utah where you can't turn it over, mm -hmm. Uh, you have to sustain drives momentum. You can't get behind the line. You can't get behind the sticks and all that. That's just the easy, the easy call is to go with the safe route. Will he be the guy in six weeks? Is the bigger question. Right. I don't know because I think who, you know I, he's going to have a short leash. I really think that. I mean, and I think that's going to be the case for everybody on this team, but really at the quarterback spot because they don't have uh, Andrew Luck on mm -hmm. this team. And the only time Jim Harbaugh in his coaching career, Andrew Luck and Josh uh, Johnson at San Diego were the only two guys that he ever decided to just say, okay, that's my guy. And Kaepernick, too, because he led him to a Super Bowl. Yeah. And those are the things. That if somebody can do great things, he settles on them and says, that's my guy because he's a great football player. Right. That's obvious. Right. If it's just a patch of other guys, it's if you're not getting it done, I'm going to find out if this guy can do it. We can always go back to you. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care if your feelings get hurt. I don't care if that rattles whatever. We're just going to keep right. shuffling it through. So I don't. I wouldn't be shocked. Maybe if somebody gets banged up, that you see him throw out another one of these guys. Maybe mm -hmm. Zach Gentry, one of these, uh, in week seven. They're like, the hell with this. He's not doing anything. He's banged up. Let the other guy go in there. We'll see what happens. Right. We've got to find out who we got. And yeah. I think that's a big, that's the big picture on all of this. you got to find out who you have. Obviously, they want to win games but really early. they got to find out who's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it'll take them very long. But I think that first half could be pretty uh, pretty heavy on the rotation. Sure. I think we'll see a lot sure. of players. And you know, the funny thing, everyone loves to talk about Shane the arm strength and that he can make the bigger throw, he can do this and that. We just went through all these wide receivers. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know who's getting the separation to go right. to go get open 50 yeah. yards downfield. That Where, you know, a, a Rudock who just makes basic plays and right. can probably stay in the game and, and, and run the I mean, offense. If you're, yeah, and if, you're, if you're thinking that that's your best pass catcher and he's running against the linebacker, Precisely. you got you got to make sure that you get him the ball and yeah. not overshoot him by 15 yards or make sure he stretches out. I just, I just think the safe route right now makes more sense. And we I just haven't heard enough about if Shane has made up a t all the ground he had to make mm -hmm. up, maybe he will. Maybe maybe this is something in six weeks we talk about it, but uh, yep. right now it just seems like Rudock's the easy bet. Well, that'll be it. Uh, Nick will be boarding a plane shortly to... On Wednesday, so yeah, when this airs. I guess I'll probably be already flying, right? Oh, we'll see, man. So that's it for, for this week's uh, Wolverine Beak. We'll be back next week, recap uh, the uh, Utah game, look ahead. And if we forgot anybody, you got to let us know. I know you guys will tell us. Oh, they'll tell us. The chart. Yeah, okay. they'll, they'll certainly tell That's us. That, that lovely comment <laughs> section right below you right now, uh, you can have at it and uh, tell Nick how big of an idiot he is. So, uh, for Nick, I'm Brendan. As always, thanks for watching.